welcome to The Photography Guy. I'm your host, The Photography Guy. Let's get started here with another great photo show. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back once again to The Photography Guy. This is episode number 65 for Sunday morning, December the 21st, 2014. I'm your host, Jack. Thank you for joining me here to learn more about your digital cameras and making great photographs. Please check out my website if you have the time to do so, and that you will find it at thephotographyguide.net, where you can comment on these shows. If you're listening to the audio podcast, you probably want to go over and check out the YouTube videos. This uh, video uh, will be, uh, this content today will be available on the video form, and you will find me at 42 Technoman. Please visit our learning site. Many of you have, and there's a lot of people signed up for these online courses, folks. Let's face it, Photoshop Elements is great, but you got to know how to use it to get all the great benefits. And if you want to do that, take one of my online courses, and you will find those at jtclearning.com. Once again, that's jtclearning.com, where you'll find hours of photography training at a price that everyone can afford. And it makes a great holiday gift. If you know somebody in your family, you say, wow, you know, maybe you're the photographer and somebody else does the editing, maybe your husband or your wife or even one of the kids purchase this course for them, or I'll wrap it up, you know, print off something and put it in a box. And when they unwrap it, they'll be like, wow, JTC learning really. And they're just going to be, you know, feel very, very lucky to uh, receive that gift this holiday season. So, folks, if you want to join our Facebook group, please do so. Many of you out there are on the Facebook group, and, man, it's just its really, really growing, that little community we have there. And that Facebook group is Jack's Tech Corner. As you noticed, I took a couple weeks off, and that is because I've been trying to revamp the studio here. And I'm still trying to revamp the studio. If you looked around me right now, if you could see the whole entire studio, you would see a very, very huge mess. Um... And, you know, I, I told my wife yesterday, I said, you know, I think I've just accumulated too much stuff. And uh, she said, really? Because she has watched this stuff accumulate over all this time. So that's a problem, you know. I mean, uh, you do start to accumulate a lot of stuff in your house. And, uh, you know, it's just more and more stuff. I'm going to switch over here real quick to the chat room. So if you're watching me on live stream this morning... Jump over to the chat room and say hello. Good morning. Good morning to June and good morning to Vicky. I see you in the chat room. We do have some other viewers in there. And I do see that uh, my my desktop here were something. Let's see here where we're at. Um, trying to see. Well, that's all right. Anyway, I see I'm cut off here at the bottom a little bit. And I can't really find the text here. I'm looking for the text, and maybe this is it. I'm going to pull this up a little bit here to try to get it better here on the screen. Anyway, and good morning to Frey. No, Faye. I'm Frey. Faye. And good morning to Peter in the UK. Uh, it's great to see you folks are in the chat room. You know, I was reading the, I was reading on the other day on the iTunes. I told you folks, uh, you know, if you really, really want to help us out there, a great way to do that is if you go to iTunes, even if you don't listen to the podcast, and put a comment in there. Somebody put a very nice comment in there the other day I read, and I said, man, that's just really, really nice. And the comment read basically that, you know, uh, they enjoy the shows, they're learning a lot about photography and their digital cameras. And it also talked a little bit about um, they enjoyed the live shows. So, you know, whoever put that comment in there, thank you so much. And for the rest of you, please comment on there. Before we get started today, we're going to be looking at some stuff here. We're going to be talking um, about some uh, a little edit I was playing with this morning uh, for you today with Photoshop Elements. But before I even did that, I wanted to maybe, let me uh, not watch myself here, let me minimize my uh, screen here, and uh, we'll go back to my notes. First thing I want to talk about, being it is the holiday season, now if you celebrate, you know, the holiday, everybody wants to say happy holidays, you know, I still, I'm old school, I still say Merry Christmas, um, but whatever you celebrate this holiday season, if you exchange gifts, 
now's a great time to start exchanging gifts uh, or, or giving the gift of photography, right? The gift of taking lifetime memories. And you, you know, you folks watching this show, you understand that. You understand lifetime memories. And you know what it is to take a picture and enjoy that photograph for a very, very long time. Uh, sometimes I sit and just look at my old photographs of the kids, you know, when they were all small, uh, when we went camping. And, you know, I just have hundreds of thousands of photographs on my computer. So this holiday season, you may be saying, well, what would I buy uh, somebody that is an inspiring photographer? Here's a couple rules to live by. If you have children in your house, don't go and buy them a little Tykes camera, one of those little plastic ones, you know, that says, I take digital pictures, because they're probably less than a megapixel, and the pictures are going to be really not that great, and you're not really teaching the child anything about photography. So on the flip side of this, you're saying, Jack, do you have to buy them a 35 millimeter? Do you have to spend thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars or more? And that's not the case either. But, you know, buy them a nice point-and-shoot camera. I would suggest the Nikon Coolpix lines, and I call them basically 35 millimeter hybrids. You've seen these cameras. It's, it's a full-bodied camera, and, you know, it's a little bit bigger than a pocket camera, but the lens is permanently mounted. Now, I like those cameras because this, the child or, you know, your young adult or maybe a loved one will learn so much about photography by using that camera because there's a lot of settings on those cameras to start playing around with and get accustomed to. Now, I'm not talking, you know, I'm not talking a, um, a three and four year old here. A three and four year old, you probably want to step up maybe to just a regular pocket point and shoot. But I'm talking more along the line of somebody between the uh, grades of maybe uh, fifth grade and I would say eighth grade. In that range, buy them a Nikon Cool Picks. They're really nice cameras and they're going to take really, really nice shots. Now, what do, you t what do you buy somebody, what do you buy your loved one that is already in photography? Well, folks, I can show you a 100,000 different gift ideas. There's some basic ones. We talked about a lot of this stuff on these shows already. One is a set of gray cards or, or you know, just a really inexpensive gray card um, to white balance their cameras. And they're very, very inexpensive. The next thing we would talk about using is maybe something like um, a white balance cap. Did you ever see those where you just a little thing you put on the front of the camera? And when you take a picture, you can automatically white balance a camera. We talked a few weeks ago about color calibration, color, uh, calibrating your monitors uh, for color and for brightness. You can buy them maybe a digital spider for their monitor, so you can actually allow them to cal uh, calibrate their monitors. Speaking about monitors, if you're still using an old CRT monitor out there, and you might be saying, Jack, what's a CRT monitor? That's a cathode ray tube. That's one of the monitors with the big back on it, right? They get really hot, and they're really hard to put on your desk. Buy that person a new LCD monitor. They are going to love you forever if you buy them an LCD monitor because the quality will be so much better that they're seeing. It's easier to get the proper color balance on those monitors, and they're going to be extremely happy that you did that. So that's just some hardware. I mean, you could talk about flashes. We can talk about flash triggers. Uh, you can talk about a new tripod. These are all great, great gift ideas. But what about if you just want to spend a little bit of money on photography because you don't want to go too overboard? Because as you remember now, my wife just said I have a lot of stuff, and she's talking about a lot of photography stuff. I have photography stuff that won't fit in my studio and my studio is basically just a home studio. I never measured it, but it's not real big. So, you, you know, you may not want to buy a lot of stuff that won't fit in their studio. But what about stocking stuffers? What about lens cleaners? What about um, uh, stuff like, a, a, you know, um, lens filters? Filters are great stocking stuffers. You can buy a cleaning solution. You know, just a little bottle that goes onto the small cloth and cleans our lenses. That's really nice. A brush to brush the camera off. And if you uh, want to look at that stuff, go back to my YouTube videos and look at my YouTube videos and fall back on that and say, well, okay, uh, there's one on there of cleaning your camera. Look at the items I show you and pick a couple of those and throw those in their stocking. Another great stocking stuffer that people often forget about is rechargeable batteries. 
you know, rechargeable batteries will save you a ton of money over the year, and they're very inexpensive, so that would be a nice little stocking stuffer also. So anyway, those are just a few items that I was thinking about would be really uh, cool stuff to buy. Um, and I want to say also uh, good morning to Brian in the chat room. Nice to see you on board there this morning. So if there's other items in there, throw them in the chat room, and I'm going to spit them out there in a little while, and we will talk about those other items that we can actually um, – you know, maybe buy for the holiday season. So whatever holiday you celebrate, I'm sure you exchange some kind of gifts. And um, that would be great, great gifts for everybody out there. <laughs> Here's one gift I didn't mention that I think would be a great gift, but you're pushing it. We only have, you know, four days left, three or four days left. And that is the gift of photographs. You've created great pictures. Um, last year, my brother-in-law actually gave us a calendar. He went out and photographed a bunch of different stuff. And he took 12 of his best pictures and made a beautiful calendar. And if you want to make a calendar next year, here's a little clue for you. Each month, get your camera out, take it outside, and shoot the different scenes. Now, if you live, remember, not too long ago, I, went, I took a vacation, went to Hawaii. The scenes we noticed didn't really change. Uh, the palm leaves don't change colors. And we noticed that, uh, you know, the leaves don't fall from the trees. And we noticed definitely that there's really no snow in Hawaii to talk about. So you don't really get those different change of seasons. But if you get a change of season where you live, take a picture each month and take those and then put those aside and build your calendar next year. And everybody will fall in love with those. A lot of people like to do their, you know, children. If you have kids, it makes a great grandparent gift. Get those kids out there in those sceneries each month of the year in each type. Uh, we've had pictures of our kids on on sleds, uh, sled riding, uh, skiing. We've had them uh, in the rapids in the summertime, you know, out uh, on, on a raft. So just a great thing to think about later on. If you want to, and I'm trying to think, would we have a show again maybe before New Year's? I don't know. I think next Sunday we can still have a show maybe that's before New Year's. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Anyway. That 365, did anybody hear that? Let's do the 365. Uh, I tried last year, and I made it until about January 15th, and I didn't do any more. What that is is you take a picture every single day. Every single day you take a picture of something. Now, it doesn't have to be anything important. It could be just anything. But the idea is to get your camera rolling with you every single day. And I, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, I was actually doing it. Uh, we were working together with uh, a uh, listener of the show, and um, she's actually on our Facebook group too. And uh, I think it's Jessica. But we tried very hard, and we lasted until January 15th, so it didn't work out too well for us. So if you want to try that 365, that's something else you can do this uh, this coming year in 2015. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take another quick look here at the chat room and see what's going on. Okay, good morning to everybody, and we are going to get underway. Let me uh, bring up my desktop here. Yep, there's my desktop. Let's get rid of that. And I think I'll move my picture and picture down a little bit and shrink it just a little bit here. I'm just uh, looking at my other screen so I can see what I'm going to do here. Okay, that looks pretty good. This out of the way. Okay, so today I thought I would talk to you about a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to talk about framing. We're going to talk about adjusting, um, or let me say uh, adjustment uh, layers, blending modes, and we're going to talk about grouping. This is just going to be a little lesson today, just to show you how to use your editor just a little bit more. So we're going to play with a couple of the tools. I'm going to walk you through a couple of things, and then you guys can take that to the next level and start playing around a little bit on your own. And I'm sure you'll come up with some really, really great ideas uh, to post out there for us back on our Facebook group. So this morning I made this little guy here. Um, let's see if I can get it a little bit better shot of it here for you. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to just try to change this... Uh, here, I want to show you the picture itself before I do anything else. Let me see here. Somehow I just uh, got this thing out of the way. Where's the other side of that? There it is. 
And for my radio audience out there, you know, this is the hard thing about not being able to see this stuff. And trying to adjust the screen size. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is nothing out of the ordinary. It's just me adjusting the screen size down. There we go. I have to find these little bars on my screen. Sometimes it's pretty hard to find those things. They don't want to cooperate all the time. Uh, there we go. So this is actually what I worked on this morning. So this is just a little framing technique I worked on. And what I was trying to do was to get that. I was trying to get a three, uh, well, 3D or 4D fill. I was trying to either pull the, pull the viewer into the picture or pull the viewer out of the picture. And we can do that simply by just applying some bevels. And the bevels are under the effects panel, and we're going to be looking at that very soon. So in this edit, it's a very easy edit. We're going to revert it back, and I'm going to start from scratch. And hopefully I can remember all the steps because I didn't write anything down this morning. I've been playing with this since about 4 o'clock, uh, preparing for the show today to uh, be able to share this with you. And there we go. Okay, so it's back. Now, So what we're going to do here is the first thing I'm going to do is revert this picture. So if I go under edit and revert, this is the picture I started with. Just a straight up picture of some scenery of an ocean front there uh, through some trees. And whenever you take a picture like this, just to throw this out there to you, so many people will take their camera and they'll zoom their lens out. They want to zoom their lens out of here, and they want to shoot maybe that hillside in the background there uh, and the water uh, hitting off of the shoreline. But when you take a picture, look for natural framing. I do this all the time. I always want some something around the picture. And there's so many different ways you could have took this picture uh, just to throw it out this morning that, you know, I didn't even take them all. Because one way is you can focus on the foreground. And you can actually put the, or I mean, focus on the background, back on this um, hillside. And you can put the trees into soft focus. Or I could have focused uh, directly on the trees, and it would put the background into soft focus. We can also do that in the editor. And you know what? I'll probably show you that. Uh, maybe I'll show you that first, and then I'll show you this framing technique. So if you wanted to put that background into soft focus, is it easy to do? Folks, it is extremely easy to do. Let's take a look at that really quickly. Let's do a control or command J. And what that's going to do is give you that duplicate of the background layer. So there's your duplicate of the background layer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a selection. So let's grab our selection tool. And we're just going to grab uh, select. I'm not going to use mask. I'm going to use selection. And add. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this area back in here. So I'm just going to try to select back in here. Just kind of like so. And I'm just going to make a quick selection of that background. So around these trees. And then if you can see this happening, I'm going around the top of the picture right here. And down. Back around, back around the trees. Because remember, the trees are now our foreground. The ocean and the hillside is our background, so we want to put that in a soft focus. Something like that. All right. We're going to add some more back here. And there we go. We're going to add this over here. So we're making a selection on the background of this image. Take this out of here. And that should be pretty good. We do want to subtract a little bit here. We want to take, we want to leave these trees open right here because we want those in focus. This in focus. So all we're doing here is we're going to just drop a soft focus back just to show you can do this in the editor. And it's very easy to do. Piece of cake. Back that up there, right on the top. We're going to just subtract this up to the top here. And you can make a selection any way you want. Whatever makes you happy to make a selection is a perfect way to do it. 
Once you do that, all you got to do is take your selected area and then you just have to blur it to blur it out. That's the idea of a soft focus anyway. So go to filter, blur, let's do a Gaussian blur. And you can see already back here how it's already blurring out. And that's on a radius of eight. Let's say we take it up. You can take it up even higher and really blur it out. But we're going to do about that may be even too much. You got to watch. There you go. About an eight. You really have to watch when you're doing editing in Photoshop because you want to make it look as much like you took the picture as possible. That's the key element here. Um, on this selection, I, I did see I want to add this hillside in here. And when you see something that you didn't get in the selection, just add it. And then you have to go up and hit filter, Gaussian blur. And you can see where it added that in now. The hillside is now <clears throat> blurred out. So now we don't have to really, you know, worry about that hillside anymore either. It's actually blurred too. So that's just a really neat way to do a soft focus. You can see now if you do a Commander Control D that now the foreground is in focus, but we blew the background out. We blurred it back out. So if you wanted to do it the opposite way, it's very simple to do. If I go to Edit, uh, Undo Deselect, and what I want to do now is just go to Select, Inverse, so if you invert it, what's going to happen now is you are going to actually add your blur to the foreground and you can clean up the background. Let's do that. Let's do uh, filter, Gaussian blur. You can see now we blurred the foreground out. But you're saying, wait, Jack, the background is still blurred. Hmm, that gives us a little bit of a problem. A couple ways you can clean that back up. You can just go up to edit and just go to undo Gaussian Blur and work your way backwards. Um, you can actually, if you wanted to, you can add a layer mask. This is your layer mask. And on your layer mask, you can actually paint and reveal the bottom, right, the background on the layer mask itself. Actually, let's uh, revert this and paint with white. You can actually start taking that back out. So you can take that Gaussian Blur out and clean that background back up again. To bring that back into focus. Just like so. Very easy to do. There we go. Uh, get my opacity up here at 100. I was working this morning and the opacity was down. So let's see if that helps it. There we go. Uh, let's see. And then you just paint on your mask and just bring it back into focus itself in that background there. So. Very, very simple way to bring it back. You can see, look, I brought those trees back. I'm painting with black on a layer mask. So there you go. Now you just learned a little bit about layer mask. So now we have the foreground of it actually blurred out in soft focus. That's if you're focusing on the background. So it's just a nice way to do it, and you can do it in the editor. All right. Let's go to edit and revert. Bring us back up here real quick. Um, okay, so Peter was just saying he bought a set of extension tubes. That's another nice holiday present. Extension tubes are basically used uh, to do macro shots. They can be purchased on Amazon for 20 or 30 bucks. I understand if you pay more, they're better, but you can buy them uh, more inexpensive than that, and, and they work. Everybody says they work really, really well. So I myself don't have a set of extension tubes. I don't do a whole lot of macro work. I seem to do more, I like wide angle, and I like a lot of zoom work. So, matter of fact, my next lens, I think, that I'm purchasing is going to be the, uh, I'm trying to think what, what the brand name is, but it is a 150 by 600, and I think it's a Tokina, if I'm not mistaken, uh, lens. So that would be the next lens I want to buy. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here, if we're going to duplicate the background layer. Oops. As you can see here, it must be on something else, so. Click back on my elements, control or command J. We're going to duplicate that background layer. And now we're just going to start making some cuts out of this picture, some squares. So we're going to make some extractions. So now we're going to use a, a, a marquee tool and we're going to make some selections. 
So I like to start in the middle here. Just start by drawing a square. I pull out from the left with my mouse and I'll do a control or command J. And you can see now that that gives me just the center. Okay. And we're going to make, you can make as many of these as you want, depending on how many layers deep you want your photograph. So let's go ahead and do another one. So make sure you keep clicking back on layer one. If you click up here, it's going to tell you there's no pixel selected because there's no pixels on the outside. Let's do one a little bit bigger this time. This is all just by fill. We can move this around a little bit right there. And we'll do another command J. You can see now where that one's a little bigger. Here, I'll shut these off. Shut this one off. Wait. You can shut this off. You can see now where this one's a little bigger. All right. Let's turn them back on. Oops. The other way there. And now let's do another cut here out of the picture. And we're just pulling and drawing marquees. So there we go. Another selection. Command J. And then we'll do one more, I think. And we'll go about here. And we're going to do the same thing. Command J and pull out. And just like that. I'll pull it back a little bit there. Make it squared up. And enter. All right. So here we have our different size pictures. There's a bigger one. Smaller one. Smaller. Smaller. Now you get the idea, right? So you're just basically making an illusion of different pictures from your base picture. So these are layers. That's how layers work. They stack on top of each other. Now what we're going to do with those layers, we're going to start with the very top one. And we are going to add the effect of the bevel. That's what we want to do now is we want to bevel this either up or down. Okay, you have two choices. We're going to do that under the FX panel for effects. So click on effects. Click the little pull down menu. So you want to click on styles on the tabs. Click the pull down menu. And there's a bunch of different stuff in here. Uh, photographic effects, outlaws. You're looking for bevels. Once you find bevels, choose a bevel that you like. I mean, it's very much, you know, it's up to you. There's a simple outer, simple inner. Let's go to simple outer. I double click it. And what's going to happen, it's going to put the bevel onto that layer. We're only working on one layer right now. That's the beauty of layers. Let's go back to our layer panel. So click on layers down here at the bottom. And we're back on our layer panel. This is our layer. You can move this layer around just by simply clicking on it and dragging it. So if it wasn't positioned perfectly well where you wanted it, just move it around a little bit to try to center it up. Now here's the nice trick. A lot of people that I know that do Photoshop uh, uh, editing, they want to go to each one of these and click the FX again and create a new layer or a new effect. You don't have to do that. Leave it on layer two or, or the topmost layer. Double click your FX and this gets you your style settings. Pull this in the middle here a little bit so you can see what's going on. And what we're going to do now with the style settings is very simple. You can raise the bevel up. Be careful how far you raise this because it starts to look not too real. Let's just give it a little bit of bevel there. You can add a drop shadow if you wish. And the drop shadow is there. You can add a glow. We're not going to add a glow though. We're going to use a stroke color. And the stroke color you see here is black. We're going to change that to white. So again, to change it, I just clicked on the little color palette over to the right of the size. And I chose white. And I click OK. Now you see there's a white uh, stroke going around my bevel. And you can create the position inside. We talked about this a while ago. Inside, outside, or center. We're going to leave it set on outside. The opacity will be full. And the size, you can bring it up a little bit if you want, just to give a little bit more detail, not too much. Eh, maybe right about there. Click OK. So there's our first panel right there. That's the first panel showing uh, the first picture. So what you want to do now is we want to begin to layer those back. Now there's a really, really easy way to do this. If you hold your Alt or your Option key. So hold your Alt key down. Click on the little FX and drag it down to the next one. Leave it go. Hold the Alt key. Click on the FX again. We're in the layer panel. Drop it and let it go. Click on the Alt key. Hold the FX. Let it go. 
and that's it. You don't have to put a bevel on the last frame there. You can see now how we have our stack here. We have, looks like a set of stairs coming up. Now, with that done, I thought, well, that looked pretty good. And as, as I was telling you, I've been doing this since 4 o'clock, trying to figure out how I wanted to show you to do this. What you want to do now is you can move these around a little bit if you have to, but just make sure you're on the proper layer. So if I want to move this one around, I can just grab it and I can move it around. I can just position it wherever I want to position it and let it go. Just make sure you don't get your trees and stuff not aligned because remember now this is separate layers and we're building basically almost a puzzle on top of each other. Once you have that done, that looks pretty good. We want to start, the next thing I started doing was I started to add a little bit of darkness on these outside layers. And I started doing that by just simply going to the back one first because you want the back one to be darker than the foreground because you're getting that effect of going into the picture. So we want to build this picture and build it from the back up. So we'll do that. And if you hit, if I can remember this, Command L, that will bring up the Levels palette. Command or Control L will bring up the Levels palette. What we're going to do here is we're just going to start taking these uh, the brightness down. But I'm going to start on layer one. So again, Command or Control L. And just start working with this to the left. The left little black mark here, the triangle. Drag it to the right. You're going to the right. Drag it to the right and start making that background darker. Watch. Watch the back one become darker. And we're going to make it even a little darker. The trick is here is to make that back one dark because it's going to have to be pretty dark. And the reason we're doing that is, is because the top ones have to also be brought down. Their levels are going to be brought down also. So if you don't bring it down far enough, what I found this morning was you're not going to get the effect that we're trying to pull off here. All right. So that should be pretty good right there. We're looking at 157 on there. Click OK. Click on layer 5. Or the next one up. I'm sorry. These are marked layers. We could have renamed these or renumbered these. But let's go ahead and do Command or Control L. And we're going to bring this one down. This layer here. So let's bring it down. Now the last one we know was 157. So this one you probably want to bring down to about... Oh, let's see here where we're going to be. That's 127. That's one, uh, 149. Let's go up from here. Let's go to 145. There's no set way to do this. It's totally by your eye. You are the editor and you're the photographer. You know how you want this scene to look. Click OK. So remember 145. The next layer up, Command or Control L. And this one, if that was 145, you're right. We're going to go less. We're going to go to about, no, we'll see how it looks here. 120, that looks, don't look enough. 135. So that's pretty good. We're going in increments of 10. Let's go to this one. Command L. Last one was 135. So we're going to just shoot for 125 and see what happens. I'm looking at the numbers right here above the output level. 125. Oh. And that's pretty good. That's a pretty good effect. I like that. And then we'll go on the top one here. And on the top one, we're going to do Command L. And now we're just going to bring that down. So if that was 125, we're going to bring this down to about maybe, oh, uh, it doesn't, you might want to leave it at 60. Again, it's totally up to you. One seven or 75. May go down to 85 right there. So now you can see where you have that nice effect where you have the, the dark in the back and it's working its way up. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And all we're doing is playing with the level. So it's really, really simplistic to do. Uh, it's just a really neat little edit uh, that I was playing with this morning uh, to see you know, how I could stack these up and how we can play with layers and learn to use layers a little bit. Then the next thing I thought I would do, I thought, well, if I did that, wonder if, wonder what would happen if we played with a layer on top of this and played with the blending modes. How would that change things? So again, we're going to click on layer 5. Now we'll go with layer 1. And if you do that, if you click on new layer, it's going to put the layer above it. And what we're going to do here is fill that layer with black. 
So go up to Edit, Fill Layer with the foreground color. Remember your foreground color. If you haven't played with Photoshop Elements much, you said, well, I don't really know what I'm doing with Photoshop Elements, Jack. Over on the right, there's our color palettes. And right here, you'll see it's black over white. The top little square is the foreground. We're looking at the left underneath your toolbar. So foreground color, click OK. And you can see what happened is it put it really black around there, put a black ring around because it's a solid color. But now we want to play with a little bit of the blending modes. A lot of people don't understand blending modes and layers and how we can blend our layers uh, into different modes. And it's just really, really cool. So let's do this. Let's go to blending mode and I can use uh, overlay or soft light. I'm going to use overlay. And now you can see where it actually gave it that more detailed in-depth look. What you want to do now though is be careful because if we go up here to lay to the next layer up and we do the same thing, watch what happens. I'm going to fill that with black, edit, fill layer with the foreground color. Look what happens. It covered up my effect on the second layer back. So it not only covered layer that's marked layer five here on my layer panel, but it also covered layer one, the background layer. Why is that? Because this layer is above. So remember layers, we always talk about layers each week and we talk about that stacked pieces of paper. So it's above everything else. So what we want to do is we want to group that. So if we group it, it's only going to work with the layer right below it. So use command or control G and now you can see where the back effect came back out. And now we can work on that particular layer. And again, we can change it to overlay. And there you go. So now we're overlaying black on that one. So we, we kind of, instead of just using the brightness to turn it all the way down, we're kind of putting like a mask over top of it to kind of hide even more of the detail. Let's try that again. Let's see if we can go to the next layer and group that one without messing with this bottom one. Now it's one of those tricky things here. This is live TV and you know sometimes it just doesn't work for me. So I'm going to edit, fill layer, fill it with black. And as expected, it, it covered everything. That's what we expected it to do. But if we group it, we should only be covering this particular layer below us. So command or control G. And now we're only grouping. We're, we're linked into that one layer. Now, let's try another overlay. And there you go. So now you have even more overlay. On. Folks, play with these adjustment layers. They are amazing. They do so much stuff. And you can have so much fun. And I think it just gives you even more ability to work with Photoshop Elements than what you even had in the past. So play with the adjustment layers. Let's go to the top one here. Again, new layer. Again, fill the layer with black or foreground color. Again, it took over the whole picture, which we expected it to do. Now, I don't want to get a bunch of emails from you guys and girls out there saying, hey, Jack, wait, it keeps covering the whole picture. I don't know what step I did next. Remember, group, command or control G. That's a group. So command or control G. Now, it's only on our one layer. It's only grouped with that one layer. This is just a really neat trick in Elements. And overlay. There, we overlaid it. So... Now we have that really dark look back in there without just adjusting the levels. The levels were primary to get us where we wanted. And then we just overlaid that black on top of that to make it even look more interesting. Now what I thought I would do here is, and I didn't try this this morning, so this is all just live TV and just playing around. We're going to go to the top layer and click on new layer. That's going to give me a new layer on the top. What we're going to do now is we're going to try something different, something totally different. And what I'm going to try here is I'm going to try to use a gradient. And a gradient is different colors. And if you've never used gradients for backgrounds, they're really nice to use. Because they're different colors. And if you look at my YouTube videos, I actually had one video, I can't remember when I did it, on how to create your own gradients. And you can build these things yourself and save these in your gradient palette. What's the gradient palette? If you're down in the toolbar and you click the little uh, minus sign or a little down triangle, you'll see the gradient palette. There's a bunch of different ones in here. Uh, there's some uh, defaults. There's some colors, metals. 
There's some uh, pastels, samples. There's some special effects in there. And some different spectrums. We're going to go up to the defaults. I would have wanted to try here. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to take this uh, orange and yellow. Orange, yellow, orange. Click on that. Close my panel. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go from the top. I'm going to hold my shift key down. And I'm going to draw a line. Why do we hold our shift key down when we draw our lines? Does anybody know? That's right. I heard you out there saying it. It's to make a straight line. Because if not, we can be all over with our mouse. Just leave the mouse go. And you can see now it put that over our whole picture. So what do we want to do now? Right, let's play with the blending modes and see what we get over this one. So if you go to, let's start with soft light. That just gives it a really nice feel. Look at that picture, how that changed it. It changed the orange around there and it just kind of put it over the whole entire picture itself. Really neat look. All right. Again, you can have hard light. Now, hard light doesn't really work for us. That's why I said play around with these. Vivid light. Eh, vivid light doesn't work for us. Linear light. I think all these are just going to be too much. Let's go up to overlay. Overlay gives it that really, really nice look. Uh, you know, the only thing with overlay that I don't like, I don't like it on the center here. So if you don't want it on the center, what would you do? Try dropping your layer down. Let's grab this layer and bring it under this layer. And you can see now where the uh, gradient affected all the layers below, but not this top layer. So anytime you get in trouble, anytime you don't like something, it's very easy to get out of it. Because all we have to do is right click on the layer. Oops. Well, right click on the layer and go to delete layer. Watch. Here goes the effect. It's gone. There you go. You're back to normal. Don't go running up to edit, go to revert, and start over. Don't do that, right? Work with your layer palettes. That's why we have layers, folks. That's why we are doing what we do. That's why we are element professionals, right? You're all good out there doing this. Let's click on that again, and we're going to do a different gradient just to see if I can pull, pull off a different effect. Um, I've been using uh, this little uh, one that looks like copper a lot. And these down here on your toolbar is linear gradient, uh, radial gradient, angle gradient, uh, reflected gradient, and then diamond gradient. All right, let's go. Let's try something different then. Let's try radial gradient. And again, we're going to hold our shift key down just so I can draw a nice straight line down the center of this thing. Leave go. There it is. We can see where it's all over top of that, but we're going to change our overlay or change or change our blending mode to overlay and see what we get. And again, that's just a really, really nice clean effect. I really like it. and I think it's good to go there. So there you go. Very easy edits, very fun to do. You know, the big thing is with Photoshop elements is you have to get in there and play. Somebody wrote me an email once and said, Jack, I wish I could be as fluent with elements as you are. Well, it didn't happen overnight. I didn't just sit down and say, okay, I'm going to start clicking and do things. You have to click things and you have to try to remember what each tool does. And in my lessons, I teach in my lessons that you should use one tool and use it and use it and use it in practice until you understand what it does and then move on to another tool. It's those out there, and I've done it in the past. I've made this mistake where you try to use all the tools at once, and then you go to do an edit. You're like, how did I do that? What did I do? What did I do? Um, I'm kind of fortunate with my YouTube videos because I can always go back and look at those. But that's the way the lessons teach you when you uh, go to jtclearning.com and you sign up for that Photoshop Elements class. It teaches you step by step by step. It teaches you what all the tools do all the way down. You know, Because not every tool is the right tool. Is that right? How many people out there has ever tried to use a screwdriver to hammer a nail? Yep, not every tool is the right tool. So be very, very careful uh, with your tools and play around with them. But then you'll get these really, really uh, great looking pictures that you can hang on your wall frame. And remember, I help you folks create conversation pieces. That's what we do, conversation pieces. So when somebody walks in your house, they go, how did you do that? That's pretty amazing. You want to be amazing, and I'm sure you will be.
And sometimes you just can't. There, okay. So folks, I hope you've picked up a lot today on this uh, episode, and I'm really sure that you will be able to do these edits uh, to the best of your ability. I'm trying to type when I'm talking here. To the best of your ability, and you know you have to practice. Just keep practicing, and you're going to do just fine with it. So, you know, it's very easy, easy to do. Folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning into the show, and you know what? Every place I went yesterday, it drove me absolute crazy. I even had one clerk say, Merry Christmas. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to say that word. Happy holidays, sir. And I said, happy holidays. I'm old school, folks, and I'm going to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas to you. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. And I hope you know that Santa brings you everything that you dreamed about in your stockings and underneath your tree or however you celebrate. If you're downloading the show from iTunes again, please subscribe to my videos on YouTube. You'll find us at 42 Technoman. Uh, I do still have a DVD collection available there. You can find those at jackstechcorner.com. And don't forget the online learning uh, classes is where you really want to be. Those are at jtclearning.com because those are, you know, once you buy the DVD, you get the videos that's on there. When you go to JTC Learning, as I add more videos, I will put those to those classes and you will receive those for free. You can sign up right now for Photoshop Elements 12 and 13 is now available on there. At the top of the page at jtclearning.com, just click on Courses and you will find those. Once again, folks, that's jtclearning.com. Everybody again, have a very Merry Christmas. And I, I think I will be back with you before New Year's, so we'll talk about that uh, holiday here soon. Um, I have a lot to do in the studio, um, and I'm preparing. Hopefully, I'm very happy to say the fiber optics is on my house, so I'm hoping to do even higher definition output. I'm trying to figure that out so I can get these to be even cleaner with you on Sundays, and you can see more detail of the editor. That's my goal. Uh, so I'm actually bought the super high-speed internet, which has been delivered, but it's supposed to be hooked up tomorrow. So let's all hope uh, that that does happen. So, folks, um, I will be doing a wrap-up and an after-show here. We'll be talking just a little bit. Until then, thank you very much for joining me and listening, downloading the shows, and subscribing. Until next time, keep those shutters clicking. Keep your editors editing, and have a good time, everybody. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to The Photography Guy. I am a photography guy, and I'll be here once again next time for more photography tips and tricks. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the show and enjoy the music.